welcome to the thankful hour of the Southern Baptist Church, where we are emanating live and direct from our sanctuary located at 1701 North Chester Street in the heart of East Baltimore, Maryland. Our vision is to transform the church and the community into the kingdom of God. Our mission is to encourage people to faith in Christ, experience the presence of God, educate believers, embrace family values, and equip disciples for spirit-filled leadership and living. The psalmist David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. And our Lord Jesus Christ told us that in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for he has already overcome the world. So we believe that no matter where you are and what you're going through, that God is still worthy to be praised. Whatever you do, don't let anything or anybody steal your joy, because if you can think of his goodness to you, you can thank him through it all. So come on, children, let's sing. And come on, children, let's shout. For the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Come on, let's thank him. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Minister Antonio Robinson, and I want to welcome you and thank you for worshiping with us this morning via our virtual worship experience. Would you join me in for a word of prayer? Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for life, health, and for strength, for things being as well as they are. God, thank you for this moment, for another opportunity to come into this virtual worship space and encounter your presence, your power, and your spirit yet again. God, we ask that you would forgive us of our sins and use us for your glory. God, we ask now that you would have your way. Manifest yourself in this worship experience in a way like you haven't ever before. God, do something new, perform miracles, signs, and wonders. Speak a word of life and truth into us from our pastor. Stand up into him now so that he can go forth preaching the word to us to nourish us so that we can go forward through the week being encouraged and blessed. Have your way. Use us now for your glory in Jesus' name. And together we say amen. Now let's come on and worship God together and spirit and and in truth. Come on, put your hands together, everybody. We've come to call on the name of Jesus. Hey. We love to call your name in something we cannot explain. Not explain, not explain that heavens we 
name of Jesus, power in his name. There is power in the name of Jesus, power in your name. Sing, there is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. Come on, I dare you declare it. Power in your name. Come on, there's still power in the name of Jesus. Come on, say power. God be the glory for the great things that he has done, he continues to do in all of our lives. I'm Dante Hickman, pastor of the Southern Baptist Church here in the heart of East Baltimore, Maryland, and it's my delight to welcome you to Southern Baptist Church virtually. Whether you're tuned in on any one of our social media platforms of Facebook, Instagram, or our YouTube channel, or our website at southernbaptistchurch.org. We're just grateful that you stopped to worship with us, and we pray 
that you will be blessed by our word and by our worship. Please know that we're constantly praying uh, for all of you uh, during this time of difficulty and struggle. And our prayers are with the people of Ukraine as they deal with such distressing and chaotic times in their lives. God be praised uh, for you worshiping with us today. And if you don't have a church home where you're already growing in the Lord, we'd love for you to become a part of our fellowship of faith. There's contact information on the screen. Contact us. Tell us how to contact you. We'll do it within 24 hours. We'll make sure you're a part of the family of God and our fellowship of faith. Again, welcome to Southern Baptist Church virtually. Well, we thank and praise God uh, that we, by this time on next Sunday, will be back in our sanctuary, worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. That's right, the fourth Sunday of this month, March the 27th, we will come back to in-person worship and ministry. And our new times will be 8.30 and 11.30 a.m. here in our Baltimore location. We ask that you would still wear your mask, that we might practice public safety and follow uh, the health codes and guidelines. And let's worship, worship together in the beauty of holiness. We're not going to hold you long, 75 minutes of powerful worship, praying, and preaching. And we're going to watch God continue to manifest his glory in all of our lives. I'm looking forward to seeing you on next Sunday. And let's so sacrificially, let's so liberally, let's give a Psalm 150 offering, a $150 seed, thanking God that the devil couldn't take our breath away. He couldn't take our trust away. He couldn't take our praise away on next Sunday. And then on Palm Sunday, the second Sunday in the month of April, we will begin our in-person worship again in our Harford County location at the Aberdeen High School. The service time will be 9.45 a.m. And we're looking forward to seeing all of our Harford County members, families, and friends. And it will be Communion Sunday on that Sunday, no less. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Let's also give in our Harford County location our Psalm 150 offering to God be the glory. On Good Friday, we're going to have our Sleepless at the Cross seven last words service right here in our East Baltimore location at 9.30 a.m. One hour of seven ministers with seven messages from the cross in seven minutes apiece. You don't want to miss it. It's always been a blessing. It's going to be a high time in the Lord over here at Southern Baptist Church on Good Friday morning at 9.30 a.m. And then on that Sunday, it's Easter Sunday. It's Resurrection Sunday. He didn't stay dead, but he got up with all power in his hand. And we're going to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 8.30 and 11.30 a.m. in Baltimore, 9.45 a.m. in Harford County. T-shirts are available for Easter Sunday worship. They are at a cost of $15. You can see the information that's on the screen, and you can make your order. You need to do it before the end of this month so that we can have them by Palm Sunday, and all of us will wear them together on Easter Sunday morning. God is good. There's so much that has been taking place in the life of our church and our community, even during a pandemic. And I do want you to know, because it's been publicized, that our Southern Streams Health and Wellness Center is moving forward to the glory of God. Many of you know it's a $33 million project, 120,000 square feet of health and wellness services from Johns Hopkins, as well as a federally qualified health center. Uh, we're going to be meeting a myriad of health needs in our community with affordable health care. God be praised for that. We ran into an $8 million shortfall. Well, the governor, Governor Hogan, budgeted $2.5 million to the project. 
and Senator Cardin through congressionally directed spending uh, got approved five million dollars to our Southern Streams Health and Wellness Center to see that vision become a reality. In a few short months, we'll be breaking ground on it at the former site of the Bugle Laundry Factory just up the street from the church. All of this during a pandemic and so much more. I'm telling you all of this because that's the power of faith. That's the power of our God. Our God is real. And our God is pleased by our faith and by our sacrifice. And as we reconnect together and as we pursue the glory of his presence together, as we sacrifice and as we give, we please God and God manifests miracles just like this, both collectively and in our own individual lives. I'm excited, Southern, because I know God is with us. And a new thing is about to happen. A new thing is springing forth. Get excited. Let's fill the church. Wear your mask. Let's praise God together. God's going to get the glory. Listen, I want to thank you for your continued and your faithful giving. Your giving makes the difference. It enables us to leverage even more funding uh, to see our church renovated and to see lives changed and to see our community revitalized. If you like to give electronically, you can do so on our website at southernbaptistchurch.org or you can download the Givelify app, find our church and our address and give there or text the word give to the number that's on the screen and you can give securely as well as spiritually there. As always, thank God for those of you who mail in your gifts or you drop them off at the church. Please know that as you give, you give as unto the Lord, and God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Our choir is going to come and bless us in song, and then I want you to hear a sermon that I preached in Miami, Florida, at the Antioch uh, Baptist Church there, pastored by our friend, Reverend Arthur Jackson. You're going to be blessed. Get ready for next Sunday. We're coming in and we're going to praise God like we never have before. God bless you real, real good. Anybody know there is no way I, that you can live without the Lord? Yes, Lord. Without you. There is no way I can
go on. I can go yes, Lord. Go your attention to the Old Testament book of Judges, Judges chapter 16, and I'm going to lift verses 28 through 30 in your hearing. Judges 16, beginning with verse 28 and concluding with verse 30. I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Scripture. Whatever version you have, it's a version of the Word of God. 
Then Samson called to the Lord, saying, O Lord God, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray, just this once, O God, that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars which supported the temple, and he braced himself against them, one on his right and the other on his left. Then Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he pushed with all his might, and the temple fell on the Lord's and all the people who were in it. So the dead that he killed in his death were more than he had killed in his life. Before you take your seat, look at somebody around you and just tell them, after all I've been through, I'm still strong enough. Amen. You might be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to preach for a few moments from that subject. I'm still strong enough. Look on the other side and ask somebody, did you hear me? I'm still strong enough. <clears throat> By the time of our text, my dear brothers and sisters, the iconic hero of the children of Israel by the name of Samson was now bound by the Philistines. This was an unbelievable sight to see that a man who was created with extraordinary strength and with the express intent to destroy the enemies of God's people was instead, according to this text, dominated by the enemies of God's people. Right. Nevertheless, it was no doubt that he was a man of God who was anointed with great strength because prior to this chapter, we read about his exploits. He single-handedly slayed a thousand Philistine men with the jawbone of a donkey. He also killed a lion and tore its carcass in half with his bare hands. Samson, my dear brothers and sisters, had supernatural strength that was given to him by God because of the prayers of his mother and the purposes of the kingdom of God. Quite frankly, he was a miracle and manifestation of God from the beginning because he was born to a woman who was supposed to have been barren. Subsequently, my dear brothers and sisters, Samson was a demonstration that God can produce something out of what some people would consider to be nothing. Consider, if you will, the creation narrative that the Bible says when the world was without form and void and dark, that God stepped out on nothing and created everything that was. Consider the prophet Elijah going to a widow woman in Zarephath, who God said would supply him with everything that he needed, only to find out she only had a little morsel of bread and just a jar of oil. And yet, because of her obedience and trust of God, that were, there was so much oil that it would hardly run out. Consider the New Testament, if you will, when Jesus had 5,000 people, not counting women and children, to feed all they had was five barley loaves of bread and two small fish. And yet, when they put it in the hands of Jesus, they had 12 baskets of leftovers. Jesus Christ, was crucified, dead and buried. And because of his sacrifice, billions of people have given their lives back to God. I'm trying to tell us, my dear brothers and sisters, that we should never base the power of God on what we do not have because God can do anything and everything with nothing. 
Somebody here is a witness that even when you're down to nothing, you can trust that God is up to something on your behalf. Nevertheless, what often gets missed and what God provides for us is the purpose for which God provided it. Samson was created as the last of a line of judges to reprimand the enemies of the people of God and to restore the worship of the God of Israel. But his behavior in the process was contradictory to the character of God and the covenants that were established over his life. He really exposed the fact that you can have the power and the purpose of God on your life and still have some personal issues and indiscretions. Don't get quiet on me now. I don't care how holy you are, you can be saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, anointed and appointed, and still be a liar. You can be a holy roller on your way to heaven and still a whoremonger. You can be after God's own heart and still an adulterer and a murderer. You, you can be a, a sanctified and still a drug addict and a pathological sinner. And while we're destined, my dear brothers and sisters, to defeat the external issues of life, I've come to discover that the greatest fight that you and I will ever have to fight is the fight within ourselves. Don't, don't look at anybody else. It's you that has the issue. It, it, it's you. It's not my mother. It's not my father. It's not my sister. It's not my brother. But it's me, oh Lord, who is standing in the need of prayer. Subsequently, my dear brothers and sisters, this is an important word for this season that we're going through right now. Because all of us have a remarkable opportunity to work on ourselves. You don't have time to worry about what somebody else uh, is doing. You don't have time to worry about sweeping up somebody else's mess. You got to testify, I got enough mess in my own life to last me a lifetime trying to get myself together. And if we would be honest, my dear brothers and sisters, while nobody ever thought that Samson would be where he was, we can all admit that we never thought that we would be where we are as citizens of the most powerful nation in the world. But here we are, like Samson bound by a worldwide pandemic, bound by systemic oppression, bound by political strongholds, bound by volatile stock markets, bound by record-breaking unemployment, bound by insufficient economic legislation, bound by inequitable immigration policies, bound by empty sanctuaries and pulpits without a prophetic word. This is more than chemical warfare this is spiritual warfare and the enemy my dear brothers and sisters is not merely Russia China North Korea and the Taliban the enemy that we have to defeat is not only within the US but it is within us somebody ought to help me preach because while many of us do have the power of God we do have the purpose of God over our lives and many of us do have the passion of God but like Samson we lack spiritual discipline Samson's strength was to be sustained by him keeping the covenants of drinking no strong drink touching no dead thing and not cutting his hair from his head. But the Bible says instead, he drank all he wanted. He touched a lion that he killed and ate honey from its dead carcass. And the Bible says he let a woman by the name of Delilah cut his hair. 
Now it's important to note, my dear brothers and sisters, that he lost his strength not because of the liquor. Somebody need to wipe your brow and say, thank God. He lost his strength not because he touched the lion, not because he touched the dead thing. And he lost his strength not because of the ladies in his life. But the Bible says he lost his strength because he lacked prioritizing the presence and the principles of God in his life. And I'm here to tell you, Antioch, that you cannot maintain the power of God without maintaining the presence and the principles of God in your life. You, you can't just play church. You got to be a real Christian, whether you're in the church building or outside of the church building. Can I preach like I feel it? I need somebody to understand that whether you're in the church or you're virtual, you still got to pray. Whether you're in the church building or you're virtual, you still got to fast. You still have to meditate. You still have to study to show yourself approved of workmen before God that needs not be ashamed, that can rightly, rightly divide the word of truth. You still have to give and give abundantly and give cheerfully. You still have to forgive those who have sinned against you the same way you expect God to forgive you for sinning against him. Yet the Bible says God gave him chance after chance. Gave him opportunity after opportunity. But whatever you do, my dear brothers and sisters, don't ever take God's grace for granted. Take every opportunity to get closer to him. If God let you get up this morning and put one foot in front of the other foot, if you can still see what's in front of you, if you still have the articulation of your speech, the activity of your limbs, the digestive tract in your, in your body, you ought to give God praise and say, God, I'm going to take every opportunity to get closer to you. Yeah, no wonder the hymnologist said, just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus, if you please, daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord. Let it be. The Bible says that Samson, like many of us, lost his strength because he lacked spiritual discipline. But then he lost his strength because he lacked submission. Let the church say submission. Samson's mission was to deliver Israel from Philistine oppression. But he made God's mission about him. Read his story and you'll find out that every time he fought in a battle, it was about him and how he was offended, but not how God was offended. But in this season, my dear brothers and sisters, we have to get back to the real reason why we sing. We have to get back to the real reason why we preach and why we serve and why we give and why we live. We, we have to constantly ask ourselves, am I pleasing God or am I just trying to please myself? Am I pleasing God or am I just trying to get affirmation and approval from other people? Am I pleasing God or am I living vicariously through somebody else? The last time I checked, the mission of Jesus Christ was still to give sight to the blind, was still to liberate the oppressed, is still to heal the sick, is still to provide for the poor, and is still to love God and your neighbor as you love yourself. I'm trying to preach to somebody that submission then to the will of God. God is key to the sustainable success of your life. Samson said, Dante, I lost my strength. I lost it because I lacked spiritual discipline. I lost it because I lacked submission. But then Dante, I lost my strength because I lacked self-esteem. Let the church say self-esteem. So Samson, the Bible says, laid his head in Delilah's lap. Not one time, not two times, 
But the Bible says he laid his head in her lap three times after she showed him that she could not be trusted. Come here for a minute because all of us have to learn that when people show us who they are, we have to believe them and realize that rarely do they change. And we have to ask the Samson in ourselves, why do I keep going back to the same poisonous well? Why do I keep going back to the same poisonous people and the same poisonous relationships that never made me well, that never kept me happy in the first place subsequently? My dear brothers and sisters, I contend that the most dangerous person to themselves is the person who is blessed, but you can't enjoy being blessed without the approval of somebody who is not as blessed as you but I wish I could find somebody in this house that can testify I'm blessed and I know I'm blessed and I don't need nobody to tell me I'm blessed I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus and I made up in my mind that I'm going to love me until I love me can I preach up in here somebody needs to realize that you can't base your love of yourself based on what somebody else said based on what somebody else does based on how somebody compliments you you need to know that everybody is not happy about your success everybody's not happy about what God is doing in your life so you've got to praise God even if you got to praise him all by yourself there ought to be one person on every row that says if nobody else on my row is going to bless him for my blessings I'll bless Bless him for myself. <laughs> Nevertheless, as a result of losing the battle with himself, the Bible says Samson was on lockdown. Here he is in the text with his eyes plucked out. His hands were chained up and he was made to be the enemy's entertainer. He was blind. He was bound. And he was a buffoon. But in that moment, he remembered God. It's amazing, Antioch, the experiences and the situations that will make you remember God. Jonah was going about his own business in the opposite direction of God until he was thrown overboard in a storm and ended up in a fish that was in the belly of hell and out of the belly of hell he cried out to the Lord David was doing his own thing sleeping with other people's wives killing their husband on the front line until God put him on the run from his own son Absalom here it is my dear brothers and sisters uh, that, that the enemy had succeeded in binding and blinding Finding Samson. But, but the Bible says in this text that they could not break his determination to depend on God. Preach Dante. And I'm preaching this sermon because despite our physical, mental and emotional bondages the enemy can't break the spirit of God within us to depend on God for a spiritual breakthrough. That's why y'all came to church this morning because despite everything you you been through you still believe that God can make a way out of no way despite the hell house that had been on your trail you still believe that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper despite how broke you have been you still believe that the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want who am I preaching to in this house that have made up in your mind that this has been a season where the enemy has tried to break your spirit he's tried to steal your joy he's tried to destroy your faith he's tried to put you down he's tried to squeeze you he's tried to make you give up on God he's tried to make you doubt yourself and second guess God but you came to church on this Sunday in the midst of overwhelming circumstances and you are testifying 
testifying I'm still strong enough I wish I had a witness in here that could just jump up right quick and say after all I've been through I'm still strong enough I know what you're saying I'm strong enough to do what pastor I'm strong enough to pray to the source of my strength I need somebody to shout that with me I'm strong enough to pray to the source of my strength that's what Samson did the Bible says in verse 28 that Samson called to the Lord this is good he said oh Lord God remember me I pray strengthen me I pray just this once oh God that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines for my two eyes y'all ain't got it because what amazes me is that this is the first recorded prayer of Samson read his chapters read the story of his life his mother prayed for him but he had not prayed for himself all this time he had been effective without prayer he had been successful without prayer he had been impactful without prayer but he soon discovered that a life without prayer is unsustainable and I'm preaching to somebody who's watching online who's been saying what I need to pray for I got a good job I got good money in the bank I got a good family I live in a nice house but I stop by to tell you that if you don't pray and call on God then everything you have can go away in the matter of a moment that's why Jesus said men are always pray and not faint and whatever you do you gotta ask and you shall receive you gotta seek and you will find you gotta knock and the door will be open to you where are my prayer warriors that can testify that prayer will give you comfort prayer will give you confidence and prayer will chart your course that's why the old folk used to say pray my strength in the Lord can I preach like I feel it somebody holler I still have strength enough to pray but then secondly I'm strong enough to position myself for success this ain't for everybody but there are 50 of you in this house that are between the devil and the deep blue sea you feel like you're drowning you feel like you're suffocating you feel like you're going down for the count if that's you in the middle of what you're going through jump up and shout I still believe God I still trust in God I'm right in the scripture because the Bible says that Samson took hold of the two middle pillars y'all ain't shouting because you don't understand he prayed but he got ready to get what he prayed for God had not answered his prayer verbally but he got ready to get what he prayed for and that's how powerful our faith in God is if I pray it I gotta expect it somebody shout any day now God's gonna come through any day now God's gonna make a way any day now God's gonna open a door any day now God gonna supply my need any day now God's gonna heal my body any day now God 
going to give me peace, give me joy, give me love. Have I got a witness? I may not have it. I may not look like it, but I'm bracing myself for recovery. I'm bracing myself for success. I may look like I'm being defeated, but really I'm being delivered. Somebody help me preach. I feel the Holy Spirit pushing me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I look like defeat, but it's really deliverance. God is about to set me free so that I can fulfill my purpose and find my peace and there's nothing that the enemy can take from you that God can't give it back better can't give it back double I'm getting ready to quit but God told me to tell somebody you're not just getting ready for overflow you're getting ready to overcome yourself you're getting ready to overcome temporary pleasure you're getting ready to overcome unnecessary addictions you're getting ready to overcome unhealthy attitudes and purposeless living somebody get ready to pull it down stand on your feet throw back your head and shout i'm getting ready i'm getting ready my new season is upon me my power is about to be restored i'm gonna get my joy back i'm gonna get my family back i'm gonna get my money back somebody shout get ready not just for overflow but get ready to overcome every devil every demon every lie every hater every backbiter every backstab i'm ready i'm ready i'm ready i'm ready i'm ready i gotta close i gotta close i ain't preached in front of folk in two long years but if y'all want me to shut it down just holler shut it down dante shut it down lift up your hands and shout i'm still strong enough i'm strong enough to pray i'm strong enough to position myself for success but finally i'm strong enough to pull down every stronghold in my life lift up your hand and pull it down i said lift up your hand and pull it down whatever has been binding whatever has been blinding whatever has been blocking you lift your hand in the spirit and pull it down that's what samson said he said lord let me die with the philistines so that god gave him strength he pulled it down and the bible says he killed more of them in his death than he did in his life i'm about to quit but god told me to tell you in order to get to your next level you gotta be willing to let go of your last level somebody shout i'm getting ready to let go of my last level right there in the place of worship somebody shout let it go that's why you can't praise him because you're still holding on to old stuff somebody shout i'm letting go of my ego i'm letting go of my animosity i'm letting go of my carnality i'm letting go of my bitterness i'm letting go of my materialism i'm letting go of my sinful attachments for the glory of god we about to shut it down up in here somebody how i'm letting it go so i can get what god has 
for me. I know why y'all ain't shouting. I know why y'all ain't praising. Because you said Samson did it, but he got killed in the process. But the good news is you don't have to die because somebody already paid the price. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you ain't got to die because Jesus died one Friday, but early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Look at somebody else. Tell them you don't have to die. All you have to do is live, 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 God already said it. It's all ready done. It's all ready done. It's all ready done. Shout it. Shout it. Shout it. Yeah. Come on, I need a hundred of you to just start walking around this church and say it's already done. It's already done. Samson was going through something he never thought possible because he was a child of God anointed with power to have victory but now he's in a situation of defeat and child of God I don't want to know how well you handle victory I want to know how well you still believe God when everything around you is falling apart. Somebody in this room may not admit it publicly, but privately you've been, you've been struggling. Not realizing how your attitude and your behavior have gotten you further and further and further away from God. But you were still looking good. You still look like you had it going on. But every day, strength and joy and peace and faith has been evaporating. Jesus told us it would happen. He said, the devil desires to have you and to sift you as wheat. But some of us walk around so pompous and so arrogant that we don't even know we're being sifted. And the reason why you're still here to give God your attention is because Jesus said, I prayed for you. Even when I didn't have sense enough to pray for myself. I'm the preacher, I'm the deacon, I'm the prayer warrior. I'm coming in here to pray for everybody else. But I, I need prayer and the good news is Jesus is praying for you look at somebody tell them that's why I'm still here that's why I, that's why I can still turn around that's why I can still make a different decision because Jesus he's praying for me and when I finally 
realize my real purpose, then I won't worry about self-preservation. Because that's been our problem. That's why we're in a pandemic now. Because it's been all about self-preservation. But God said, what you gonna do when I take the air from you? No wonder the psalmist said, let everything that have breath, praise the Lord, because breath is in minimum supply these days. But thank God that my purpose, God's purpose for my life is not to destroy me, it's to develop me. So that I know that the best joy I can have is fulfilling God's will for my life. God is looking for somebody in here today who's been beaten down by life, battered and bruised, and you can honestly say it ain't been nobody else's fault but my own. God is saying today is your day. This is your moment. This is your opportunity to find peace, to fulfill your purpose, to trust him again, to make you stronger. If you receive it and believe it, go ahead and give God praise for it. Oh my God, I needed that word uh, in my life. Somebody under the sound of my voice who has never received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, now is your time, now is your opportunity. Even in the midst of those negative feelings, move forward and trust God by faith. If you want to pray the prayer of salvation, come on, pray this prayer with me. Close your eyes, humble your heart, repeat after me, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Fill me with your spirit. Come into my heart and save me. I know you died for me. I believe God raised you from the dead for me. Save me according to your word and by my faith. In Jesus' name, amen. You prayed that prayer, lightning may not have flashed, thunder may not have rolled, but the Spirit of God did enter into your heart quietly and albeit quickly. And I want to help you to cultivate that seed of faith. If you contact me using the information that's on the screen, tell me how to contact you. We'll do it within 24 hours. We'll make sure that you're a part of the family of God. And if you so desire, you can be a part of our fellowship of faith. God bless you. Real, real good. We're about to go down from this place in this space, but never from the presence of God. Get excited. We're coming back to in-person worship at our Baltimore location on March the 27th, the fourth Sunday of this month at 8.30 and 11.30. And then we'll also come back to our Harford County location at the Aberdeen High School on the second Sunday in April, Palm Sunday at 9.45 a.m. Good Friday services we'll be having. Our sleep is at the cross. Good Friday service, 9, 9.30 a.m. on Good Friday. And our Easter Sunday services. Get your t-shirts. Order them now. I'm excited about this next level of our ministry in God's house and the kingdom of God. And now may the God of grace and glory bless you. May he surround and sustain you with his presence and with his power, now, henceforth, and forever. And together we say, amen. Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. He goes before me. 
defender behind me. Come on, say, I won't fear. I'm filled with anointing. Come on, sing with us this morning. My cup's overflowing. No weapon can harm me. Come on, just say it. I won't fear. Come on, unless it's it up. Hallelujah. Declaring, he's my comfort. He's my comfort. Always. Always holy Let's go to the second verse. He always. He always guides me. Hey. Through mountains and valleys. Refreshing. Joy is refreshing restores my soul His glory. My victory, my victory, say your 
Forsaken, no, it's even bread. You are not alone. 